All right, first on the agenda, we have Kyle, who's here to talk about kind of uh, future direction of IAM stuff, which is great since we're discussing account design. Uh, there is a link to an etherpad for uh, all of the outline that Kyle provided there. So Kyle, take it away. Sure. So um, I was had a long conversation with, with Casey about this on Friday. Um, but one of the things we wanted to do is there are uh, there are some, some 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 gaps in our IAM, and we would like to kind of uh, see 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 what we could do about that. I think one of the things that has come up was. Uh, for example, how you would do usage accounting for, um, uh, like, like if you do, if, if somebody sets up IAM and they set up uh, uh, OIDC, like an OIDC provider and policy such that uh, a principal is able to, like, assume a role, then, um, and they do, like, a make bucket call, who does that belong to? Um, and I kind of was was going back and looking through the, the the structure of how this normally works in like for example like S3 proper or Amazon proper, and generally there's this notion of a, a root account, and then underneath that root account you you know have um, that that the the one the unique aspect of a root account is it's the only sort of principle. Where there's any sort of notion of ownership, so um, the you know the it's it, ownership of buckets and things like that are, is is not is not something that uh, maps to like a sub resource. So if you you know a user doesn't own a bucket per se, an account owns a bucket, um, and uh, an account can create multiple users and they can create roles and any you know actions taken by any of those you know user or role principles um uh you know they don't own you know they don't own the bucket and they don't own, and he who owns the the Hello? Did it just freeze for me only? Yeah, I've lost audio from Kyle. Yeah. Okay, I think it was just him. Pull up quota to uh, the, the root account level um, and also things like bucket stats. Um, hey, uh, Kyle? Yes. We, we lost your audio maybe for the last minute or two. Sorry. Oh. Okay. Yeah, you were you were discussing ownership and how that belongs to the root account instead of users, and then you cut off for a bit and then came back with quota. <laughs> okay, well, um, I, I guess what I was saying is that all ownership rolls back up to the user, and that you know, he the, the he who he who owns the he who owns the bucket owns the usage, and that would apply to both bucket stats and any sort of quotas, and so quotas. Kind of become something that gets applied at the account level, not at the user level, and same with uh, with with bucket stats. Um, and then and then this one the, 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 this the, this kind of helps clean up the situation around um, if you have if you you know you can have you can have you can have multiple roles and you can have multiple users and the the, the quota all rolls up under the user and you don't have uh, I'm trying to think there was a situation that we were talking about on Friday, Casey, but it was a, a if, if the role, you know, if you, if you have, if you have multiple roles, you know, if somebody creates multiple roles, then there, there isn't a way to like, like who, who, who owns the, who owns the usage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Currently the roles are essentially global. And so there's no, concept of ownership really and so we kind of just have to map it to a user that i guess assumed the role and i think i think the only the only potentially 
tricky thing is that um, right now when we like like the ARNs that we use for referring to resources and things like bucket policy or IM policy, those those ARNs usually uh, like like one of the fields like the field that would normally be used for account in AWS we currently have tenant and so there's the, the, I think that's the only potential issue is if we wanted to actually have that position in the ARN B4 account ID like it is in Amazon that would uh, that and, and there's people out there that have that have written policy that have uh, the, the tenant you know a tenant string there instead uh, I don't know what I don't know what we yeah. do about that yeah so the um, the pull request that has a design doc in it proposes a specific format for the account IDs starting with capital RGW and then a bunch of numeric digits so if we require that specific format for accounts then I think we can use that to disambiguate to support both account or tenant there does that make sense okay. yeah so okay so so, so it, you could you could have either account or you could have either the account or the tenant in that position in the arn and um so if somebody already had references to tenants in their uh in their policies or something it wouldn't break it um yeah that's the end time Okay, and then if they wanted to move to the newer style, then just they would, you know, instead of having tenant there, they would they would use the the RGW prefixed account ID in, in lieu of the tenant. That's right. Yep. Just create an account, put the user in it, and start using the account ID instead. Okay, I think that's re relatively reasonable. Are 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 tenants always strings? Or are they like what does a tenant string look like? I can't remember. Um, I don't know that we have any specific requirements, although parsing delimits with colons and slashes. So Got I think it. it's expected that it's just an ASCII or UTF string. Okay. But 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 for all intents and purposes. People are probably not prefixing their tenant names with RGW. And it'll be fun. That's the hope, or at least it's not capital RGW followed by seventeen numeric digits. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fair. I was just curious if, like, if 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 we were creating the tenant IDs, if we could just get away with having it be like like if it was just all numeric, then we would know it was an RGW one. Versus if it was a UUID, we would know it's a tenant or something. But it sounds like we probably need the, the RGW prefix if it's kind of a free form string. Yeah. I mean, tenant is a as a concept came from the, the Swift OpenStack integration. So I think that usually comes from OpenStack account names, mm -hmm. if I'm right. Probably. And 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 we probably use the name and not like a some sort of UUID or something. I don't know. I guess you'd have to look uh, at the up. I, I guess they do have weird IDs sometimes. UUIDs, maybe. So either way, I think the RGW prefix is unobjectionable. Um, yeah. All right. Um, on the topic of ownership, uh, it makes sense for the account to own the usage. I'm curious about the list all my buckets API, though. If a user sends a list buckets request, does it see all of the accounts buckets or just its own? Uh, well, you know, provided provided it's not restricted by some sort of policy, then then, then it. Well, I guess because list but uh, yeah, which it would show them all, and 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 then you know perhaps policy would dictate that they're not able to access all of them. But um, okay, yeah. 
I could I could I could verify that, but I but my understanding is that's how it works. Cool. Like if I if I could like if I have my my AWS account, right? I have my root account, and then if I do bucket list using those credentials, then I see all the buckets. Um, the the kind of the the uh, the the recommended thing to do is not to use that root that set of root account credentials for interacting with S3. So if I'm going to configure a tool like S3 or S5 CMD or the AWS CLI, and I'm only going to use it for S3, then you know they tell you that you should create an IAM user and you should set, create a set of credentials associated with it, and then you should use those credentials, um, right? And the the policy for it should you know maybe it says allow all S3. But then that way, if somebody gets a hold of those, they're not going to like spin up a bunch of EC2 instances and mine bitcoins or something, right? Um, yeah, and I th I, th I think that even without any specific IAM policy to to deny stuff, um, buckets created by one user would have them as the ACL owner, and so other users by default wouldn't have access, even in the same account. Mm, that may be true, yeah. OK, so we have the the list buckets and usage accounting stuff is integrated with RGW users now. Um, but we should be able to reuse a lot of that logic um, for accounts as well. But I have a feeling that we won't that for users in accounts, we still want to do accounting at the user level, too so that we can support stuff like Rados GW admin user stats as we currently do. Um, there would just be an extra indirection to the to the account stats. Okay. So who so if so like if I have an account and I create a bucket and then I have two users that are writing data into that bucket, who 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 is the usage attributed to? Yeah, good question, I guess. Um, if we don't specify a single user as the owner, then we wouldn't be able to account it as the user. That was only the that was the okay. that was the main challenge I had with with you know user you know, because it's like you can't how, how do you meaningfully uh, do but you know, bucket stats normally it's like he, you know, he who owns the bucket owns the usage, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, I mean, it seems like users in accounts can't have their own individual stats. It's just stats at the account level and quota at the account level. Yeah, I think I I, I think that's uh, yeah. I, I don't I don't quite yet see a way around that unless we wanted to get into the business of doing. You know, uh, 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 associating uh, like individual objects with with like who created them. And that sounds like a business that we don't want to be in. Yeah, that's been an ask several times. Uh, Ali has has looked into it, but it's uh, definitely wouldn't pull that in as a requirement for accounts. I don't think I don't think we otherwise keep track of anything like you know exactly. Well, because I guess it would get even even more tricky too with things like roles, right? It's like multiple, you know, potentially multiple people can can assume a particular role. Does that mean that the you know all the usages is just associated with that role? Uh, yeah, I guess I, I don't. I don't know how we do that at like a per 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 object level, or whether we. Yeah, I, I think we probably shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm just thinking that, like, an account administrator might want to be able to see which of its users are using the most capacity, for example, and they wouldn't really have a way to do that in this model. But uh, I mean, maybe. Maybe some kind of account hierarchy would be a better way to do that. Yeah, I, I mean, I think I, I think I would generally, you know, if, if I needed to, if I needed to do accounting, 
for 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 different different folks, then then I would give them each a distinct account, right? And then and then and then users are something that they can do to uh, scope at like uh, sc scope policy of 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 for, for different applications, right? So if I have if I have three different applications, I could create different IAM users and credentials, and I can you know limit particular applications to accessing you know some subset of my buckets and making some sub subset of API calls. Um, but all of the usage is, is is in fact mine, you know. Okay, so it sounds like we're agreed on ownership and accounting and quota being at the, the account level instead. Uh, what other topics do we have to discuss? Uh, I see the concept of usernames and passwords here. Is that related to like account recovery stuff? Um, I had a pretty dumb question, actually. This so this account is basically encapsulating a Swift user and as a S3 user into a bucket. Like today, we have Swift users and S3 users, and both can have IAM. So basically, now it will be an umbrella under which uh, umbrella call is account under which you could either have an S3 user or a Swift user, and then that account will basically manage your quota IAM policies and stuff like that. Is that where we are heading? I mean trying to understand cons of why do we need account. Uh, so I mean, in I guess first, an RGW user can be used for Swift and or S3. It just, you either create Swift keys or S3 keys for it. Um, so they, one user could do both APIs already. But um, the the account concept maps to uh, IAM in S or in AWS, uh, and it's basically the idea is that the admin would create an account and give credentials to a user, and that user would be able to create and manage their own users and roles and policies. So it's kind of a way to delegate some management to to API users. And that comes with the, the grouping of but users it, and groups and roles. Isn't today an S3 user itself be able to create IAMs or token? I mean, it, it's, it also has the ability to create IAM accounts for itself today. Yeah, I'm talking about an S3 user. Um, sorry, I'm not sure I follow. Create IAM accounts with a user. So an S3 user can still do those what we are proposing an account would be able to do, like um, create IAM accounts, manage quota and stuff. OK. Uh, so by default, a, a user can a user can either be in an account or not. Currently, we don't have accounts, so all users don't have an account. So they wouldn't have access to IAM account APIs. Um, but once you create an account, that, that also creates credentials for an account user that has root access to all of the account APIs to create sub-users and, and roles and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know that there's specifically like account APIs. There are IM APIs, and there are users that have that are allowed to to make those calls. So if I, if I if I associate an existing RGW user as a root account, 
um, then, then, then that user can, of course, you know, create IAM users. If, if, if the inline policy, you know, if that user has an inline policy or if there's a, a managed policy that's attached to that user that permits them to make IAM calls and they could, you know, then that, that I, I, I am call that I am user under that account could, you know, create roles or policies and, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, and otherwise interact with the I am APIs as dictated by that managed policy that's attached to the user. Um, uh, and, and then I guess, yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, makes sense. Um, I, I was under the impression probably as an RGW or an S3 RGW user, which is an S3 user, also could do that. But is, this is more like an admin way for allowing an admin to do the stuff for an, any S3 user today, right? Like that account would then be able to create roles for a given S3 users. Is that we are heading right? If I understand correctly. Well, right, right now we don't support. IM user creation through IM APIs, right? So, you, you, um, so in order to, I, I believe, in order to, to to do that thoughtfully, we um, and 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 have sensible and have things like sensible ARNs. I think I, I think we have to introduce this this account, uh, okay. this notion of an account. Um, because that's kind of the 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 parent object for things like okay. roles and users and policies. Right. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, and when you say an S three user, I I would say that RGW users are just API users, um, and so you can things like policy can grant them access to things in the S three API as well as things in the IAM API. Right, and then Matt, I, you had brought up something around, you know, this potentially being a regression. Did you understand what I was saying? Where, if 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 people wanted to preserve the existing quota and bucket stats behavior, they could either one not create accounts, or two, for each existing RGW user, they could they could they could create an account and and associate that user with that account, and then there is no loss in reporting granularity. It just means that. You know, each of those accounts would have richer functionality in terms of being able to create IAM users and and that sort of thing. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. So we've we've been talking about this concept of account hierarchies. So. For example, one account could essentially own another one. Is how how is that exposed in AWS? That's not something I'm familiar with. Yeah. So um, the way that it the way that it works there is um, you can you you for for any given root account you can um, set what's you set the organizational unit or the OU, and and that can that can reference another account. Um, and and that basically creates like a a roll up, um, uh, usually for, for for billing, right? So it's like if I'm if I create if I have my own AWS account and I have a bunch of resources in it and I uh, generate some amount of usage and I have an associated bill, if I want like uh, my my business unit or something to to pay for my account, and then I have peers that are in that same business unit. We could all take our individual AWS accounts that we manage ourselves, and we could associate them with like another AWS account that's ran by that's owned by like our uh, the uh, you know so, so, some administrative personality in the business unit, and so all of me and my peers we set our OU to that 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 administrative uh, account, okay. and then and then they can. You know that that way they can see the usage across all of the account. Oh, you just you just cut out again, Kyle.
still can't hear you. Yeah, he'll be back. My internet is not cooperating today. Sorry. <laughs> back. Last I heard was that a, a parent account could see the usage of all of the of like me and my peers, and and then they can also there, there's also this notion of being able to create um, what are called I think uh, service control policies. So like the OU could create a service control policy, and that policy would cascade down and 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 uh, uh, could you know prevent all of the accounts under that OU umbrella from from doing certain operations. Okay, so for I guess call it a, a parent account and a child account. Does the child account, can it see anything in the parent account? Does it have a way to know what service control policies are being applied there? Um, no, not that I'm aware of. You're just How kidding. about vice versa? Can the parent account see roles and users and policies in the children? I don't believe they can, I, I don't believe they can see them, or they can see usage. Um, I've, I've I've been a child to a parent. I haven't been the parent of a child, so I would have to I would have to probably experiment to see exactly what the scope of what the parent can do. Um, I don't know if they're able to like assume a sub account or something. I would have to okay. I would have to look into that. So, usage and quota information. I guess I'm not. I haven't seen that stuff exposed by the IAM APIs. Um, how would we want to manage that uh, well, in RGW? Yeah, I don't know that IAM APIs provide quota. Um, I know that like, Am like Amazon does have quota APIs. And the way that they work is um, like as, for my account, I can, I can I can list, I can sh see all the different quotas that are associated with my lot of like, so it'll, you know, they have, they set quotas on like the number of instances that you can like provision at a, of a certain size. Like you can't just go to Amazon with a brand new account and create 4,000, you know, bare metal virtual machines, right? They'll tell you no. Um, and so the way that you would, you know, if you actually have the, the wherewithal to pay for four thousand virtual machines, then um, you you would request a, a quota increase with AWS, and you can do that by API. And so you basically say, for you know, this is the there's like uh, quota types. You say I want I want, and and you can see the the current value you have for the the quota, um, and you can request an increase, and you provide the number you want an increase to, and then Amazon either approves or or, or denies it. Okay, so this this isn't part of IAM stuff, though. Uh, no, not not directly. I mean, it is okay. it is kind of so, neat. I do think it's a kind of a neat idea, but um, like if a user could say, "I want more quota," and then the admin in the morning kind of sees the list of outstanding quota requests, and they can you know thumbs up, thumbs down, but it's just kind of orthogonal okay. to the IAM. So the RGW's quota stuff currently is managed with Thratos GW admin. Um, it's out of band. And so, yeah, so yeah. the admin has control over that stuff. It's just not uh, an API based. Well, I, I guess we do have admin APIs for, for setting and uh, enabling, disabling quotas. So the functionality exists for users, um, but it would require an admin to actually do the stuff. So yep. we'd want, to want the similar functionality for accounts. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because if quota is moving to accounts, then 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 you would uh, then you would need to you would need to be able to manage it there. Yeah. We're already going to require the admin to create accounts in the first place, and so managing quota, I think, the same way makes sense.
I guess by default, the admin would be the only one with visibility into usage as well. Of the of the account, yeah. Uh, yes, it would, Matt. I suppose it would. It would be quota by 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 tenant, but it wouldn't then allow you to have sub sub quotas, you know, within the tenant. I don't know if that's objectionable, but it kind of just moves move moves the quota to to by tenant as opposed to being by user. Right. I guess the existing use cases are for tenants have a set of users under the tenant as some kind of organizational unit. And so mapping mm -hmm. that to a single account under that tenant namespace would, would give similar stuff. You just wouldn't be so able like to. They, they, they want to give quota to the department. We lost you right after you said, quote, give quota to the department. I'm sure you can see it lagging on his end. It's not fun. Yeah, so to Matt's point, we, we could support quota by tenant, but we would have to trade that for quota per user. We couldn't have both at the same time in this model. Yeah, I think, I, I think this is going to be a little bit problematic. I, I sort of feel like we need user feedback. You know, I, I don't think anyone cares what a larger view of user is terribly much. But the larger scale, the more sophisticated the environment, the more sophisticated at least some demands for quota, in spite of the fact that quota is fairly expensive in all storage systems to implement. I wonder, wonder if the hierarchical account idea could work there if kind of the child accounts um, were all limited by the parent global quota. Well, that feels like account by tenant. I mean, if you, you know what I mean? If you ultimately have IAM, I don't know what, what I think we should, do we not want to call them IAM users? So basically we have, Authenticated users, S3 users, are, or authenticated roles with an identity. People would want to still impose, enforce quotas on, on on them in various ways, not just in terms of what we supported before, but we. Should, it's like a, it's like a it's like a matrix of of aspiration that people would have, and we. They don't want to take on insane responsibilities for for, for, for a quota, but I, but I but I want us to design for what enterprise and service bureau operation wants to have, wants to have or needs to have. This might be a little bit different from what happens to be in AWS right now. I think the account ownership piece is we, we want to align with it. So I so I buy the basic ideas here, but for quota enforcement, I don't know. We, we've, we've often had discussions that sort of ended with, well, it's going to be expensive to change this, so this is what we got. Right. Well, maybe maybe the way to look at it is that the current quota system is only tracking usage by bucket ownership. Yeah, that's a, that's a key um, example. But in fact, people often have multiple users sharing a bucket, and all we, all we can do is look quota the bucket itself. Right. And the, the change with the account model is that ownership is represented at the account level instead of the user level. That doesn't solve this problem. That doesn't, that doesn't really solve it at all, right? It doesn't solve the aspiration for the more for the fine grain quota. So no, sorry. it doesn't. No, it, it, I, I think I think we I think we need to explore like when you, when you have when you have multiple accounts that are uh, 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 arranged in some sort of parent child relationship. Using using organizational units, you know, I I believe each of the, each each of the each of the accounts has an individual quota. I don't know if the parent if the parent account can have something of a global quota over all of the accounts that point to it as a OU, um, because that 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 seems approximately close to like what you described, where you want to give like a department a quota, 
and then and then the, the department head is then able to you know subdivide that quota amongst their constituency right well there are a bunch of but there are a bunch of non non <laughs> i'll call them non ibm people on this call i mean what are some some, some folks manage cloud, manage s3 cloud services or whatever what what are some of the interesting quota things to people that that with some of those participants in this call see as critical or or, 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 or or are there any but from what i gather talking to various large entities then there's there often is Maybe it's not even obvious what the what the what the domain really is. I mean, like, 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 like the a pure tenant slash account quota would be like, well, our department quota would be this is how much storage and has how many buckets this entity, this entire aggregate has. Full stop. That's it. Um, as opposed to this bucket has a quota, and everybody who you know, we have, we have, we already have that, but like this each user has a quota has a quota of foo on this bucket B. Anybody want or need that? There are people that have asked, there are multiple large entities that have asked us for quota by storage class so that storage classes of high value storage won't be overfilled. We'll enforce it. That might be the total loading on the storage class, but but we've asked, but they put it, but, but that wasn't what was asked for. What was asked for was to prevent users with this department or even this user from using more than foo bytes on storage class. Yeah, yeah, I think that makes sense. I, I, I guess I'm wondering, you know, we, we it's a checkered we, history we, of quota and in, in, in file systems. It turns out <laughs> it's expensive to do, and well, we, I, I mean, we, we, we have, we, we have the ability to do that, and we would continue to have the ability to do that. You would just give, you know, each person you want to keep track of, they would have an account, or in the previous model, it was each person you want to keep track of, they have their own RGW user. Um, and if you want to, you know, and if the user wants to share some of his uh, stuff across those boundaries, right? Like, you, like, like, say we adopt the account model, and I have an account, you have an account. I can, I can create a bucket. All the usage in that bucket is attributed to me because it's I own it, and I can give you access to the bucket, but it's, you know, my responsibility for the, the, the you know, whatever you create there, even though I've you know, giving you cross, uh, cr cr you know, cross account access that's to. We, yes, that's what we do today. Yeah. Um, um, so, 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 I, so I guess I'd be interested in like, like, so, 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 so people, people, people are expressing a desire to, you know, so, so you have an account, I have an account, I create a bucket, I own the bucket you i give you access to the bucket you put stuff in it but i'm some i'm i'm, I'm able to restrict yeah, how, yeah people have asked for that for, since, 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 the, since the earliest time like 2015 that i that i work with rgw people have asked for that we've never offered it I'm inclined to just say no, <laughs> but well, well but I, I guess and, i don't really understand what they're doing uh, you know what I mean, and maybe that's just ignorance of of the workflow, right? Are they, you know, what if I'm giving you access? Well, nobody ever. Well, I mean, like, like in file systems, the analog was you know, is, is is clearly is clearly file system, right? Nobody has quotas on. Well, I don't do they or not? Traditionally, nobody had quotas on directories or things like that. There there are systems I've seen that actually did, like 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 there there are lesser implementations and stuff that, that maybe does. <laughs> but well, I mean, HPC in HPC, I've seen it. NetApp NetApp has Q trees, right? So so you can kind of uh, you 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 don't get it for for every directory, but you can say like I want you to keep track of quota from 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 this point in the tree out to the leaves. So that's kind of a, so, so that, yeah, that's something that's, that's an example of exactly that um, where the, where that was set up, where that aspiration was coming from. And people have asked for it in terms of buckets, say. and then one of, then one or two, and they just ask us about storage class because not 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 not, not as a not, not as an S three namespace issue, but as a but as a but as a storage tiering cost containment. You know, but but in the case of like a Q tree, like like a Q tree is 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 based on 
it is kind of it would kind of like be it, it would be equivalent to doing like bucket stats or 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 uh or or, or rgw quotas on uh on a key prefix within a bucket right it's it's, it's not like it's, it's not like the the, the multi-account type thing that, that that we described where you have an account i have an account i have a bucket you write stuff in it you know what i mean it's different well, well for Qtree, I, I didn't know the syntax of Qtrees, and I and I admit I don't I don't I'm, I'm talking about like stuff I I'm just, I'm, I'm remembering stuff that I, that I that I saw in a presentation by Hartman Reuter for RxAFS, and I think it was based on Lustre stuff, and I don't know what the rules were there. Either. But yeah, you could send policies on a directory. You could stick them in there, and and then they would you know they, they did various things. They had ACLs there, but they had other stuff. Yeah, I th I, I think my intuition was, is like with something like a Qtree, the equivalent would be if, if they could set a quota. On, on, on like you know not only just a bucket quota but you could say like a, a a quota on a prefix of a bucket and i think i, I think you know we just say well the, the the you know paths within a bucket are are are, 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 are virtual and if you if, if you need something like quota then you, you know create just make buckets right i think that's if multiple users have access to the same bucket, then how would you define the quota for that bucket down? Well, I know that's what I mean. <laughs> well, let's see that. So, that was, was, go on, Raghu. So, yeah, I mean, is there an aspiration for that? Is there a need for that? Tell it to me. So, the, the thing in AWS that I'm familiar with that I guess ties in here is the requester pays functionality. I'm not sure exactly how it ties in, but at least I assume like bandwidth usage would be billed to the the user that is uploading or downloading. That's true, right? So, well, I mean, you don't, you, you don't, you don't, you don't have to pay any money to upload to a bucket, um, and so requester pays is really like, like if I'm a like say I'm a research institution, and I don't I don't have any budget. Like I want to make my data sets available, but I can't afford this massive AWS bill. And so I could I, I could set it so that you know people can people can access the bucket anonymously, but they have to do so with requester pays because I, I can't afford to pay AWS for all the egress fees. So it's like you can you know you, I'll share the data sets, but you, you you have to you you know you have to pay AWS for the the, the egress costs, right? So I think that's okay. a little. But weird. the owner is still is it special? The owner is still paying for the capacity use. The owner is still paying for the capacity, right? Because so it's like it's, it's 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 my data set. I want to share it, but I don't want to I don't want to impose the burden of 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 transfer fees. Like if you do a requester pays and and then you do a put into a bucket, you you, you the that you know like that the the space usage is not attributed to the the uh, calling principle. Yeah. No. To, to, Raghu, to Raghu's point, uh, if the, the quota is applied on the person who creates the bucket first, or who's the owner of the bucket. And so we'd mentioned earlier the scenario of the bucket's 100 and user A puts 50 uh, and user B also has access, then they can only put another 50. But that quota is not applied to user B's quota, just user A's quota. I got that right, right? Yeah. Right. So the concept is that the it's the quota by ownership. Um, right. Which I think maps well to AWS accounts, but there are requests for more granular tracking and enforcement. So it's like if if you like if you wanted if you wanted something like that. Like I, I think the way that you would be forced to do it in AWS now is, is is instead of having one shared bucket and then per user quotas within that bucket, you would you know you would create bucket A, bucket B, and each and, and they would be owned by user A and user B, and 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 each of them would set up access so that the you know if it's user A's bucket they set it up so that B can access if it's user B's bucket they set it up so that A can access it. And and then the yeah. well even that even yeah, that doesn't up, quite work. You end up with bucket. You end up, you end up driving towards bucket quota. And we do have that. Right, right. It's like it's like can you can can you can you get effectively the same thing with bucket quota? 
well, you can't control user A versus user B, but you can but you can constrain the amount of storage in bucket. Well, right, but but you could you, you know you could you could have, but like I I could allow you to read from my bucket, and then like you can write into a bucket your bucket, you can have a quota of fifty, and I could write into my bucket have well, a quota. Of right, 50. The thing, yeah, you I mean, can share the, with the, each the other. other. Right, the user quota is is, is 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 counting against, as I understand it, the user's total space. You, you know, you, you, so total 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 allowed utilization, which makes it troublesome to use that to carve up use resources between users. You instead, you instead want to, you know, one way or the other, you want to attach it to something that's disc, disc, discrete, like a bucket. Right, and that's what I'm saying. If you if if, if you if, if you want if you want to give everyone access to like an uh, an upload area, so to speak, then then you you know, you, uh, you you kind of have to you have to create a, a, a bucket for each person you want to uh, you want to give that limit to, and and, and set up and set a bucket quota, and then if if you additionally wanted to be able to share like everyone to be able to look at everybody else's upload area. Then, then you would you would have to you know do that through you know roles or something, right? Oh. I don't know. Okay, I get it. I mean, at least it sounds like yeah. You know, it doesn't occur to anyone other than me or a couple of people on this call um, that that there's that this that this that these were gaps, which is good in a way. I'm not sure if that's true, but no one's, no one's speaking. Yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 I it's, I, I understand. I, I, I see the pr your, the perspective you're coming from. There, there are, you know, if I, I think the the ways that you could deal with it are potentially kludgy, um, but, but, but I don't know, I don't know how else we would do it <laughs> without without like tracking, like, like you know, th this user created these objects. Right. Well, exactly. and, and, I, I, I like not doing more work. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. I mean, the the concept to me is that, you know, you own a bucket and its usage, and if you're granting access to other people to upload to it, you still own the 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 things that they do with it. You're still accountable for it. So you better set. I mean, so you better set bucket quota. I mean, I would think minimally. That, that I guess that's what the workflow that you have. Yeah, so I guess one thing we support that I guess Amazon doesn't is the per bucket quotas, but those still have to be configured and enabled by an admin. So um, the end users don't necessarily have the ability to set quotas on their own buckets. Well, that seems like a gap that might help help me in, in terms of in terms of getting more giving users more control. That seems like something that would map into the account framework. Like we create an extension that allows a policy that enables that. Like a get. Oh, oh yeah, because like through the the get get set quota thing, I don't know how that how we would do that with that particular API. We I mean we could we could create our own. Well, I, well, of, I think it would be. Or, a, I think yeah, yeah I think it would be a policy thing. Yeah, so right there there isn't existing AWS APIs for it, but potentially um I mean we have admin APIs for it that we could potentially tie into quota auth. So if you're if you have permissions to change things at the account level, then you can set and get quotas on on buckets in that account. Yeah, it seems it, seem, it seems useful to have some sort of some some sort of quota API that yeah, you could also you could, you could also extend IAM policy grammar to to do something like this. Um, and in terms of actually doing it, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know in addition, to, you, know, you can put it, you can expose it in a in a, in a, in a dashboard as a way to so you don't have to have so that end users who are doing this self service don't have to do a document and upload or something. So there's like some combination of of well, I guess. I am feels more like 
I, I, wouldn't it be almost like bucket policy as opposed to I am policy? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm using that. Like, I mean, I, I guess I'm using the word. I, I'm. I, but, 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 uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean to say the policy. I mean to say yes. The 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 the, the policy and grammar that the, that is in bucket policy. Got it. Sorry, sorry, I have like one very basic question. Uh, so, like, if you use a federated user, how would you assign a quota to that federated user on self? Because on self, as far as I know, you assign quota to like S three users. But if a if a, if there is like a federated user. Using okay. it's assumed role. You mean a user who has assumed role? Or yes. A role that is a role. A user that is a role. Yes. So how would you set the quota uh, for that? Well, we I don't know that we we don't have an answer for that because right now we're well, saying we, that we, uh, well, we do. I mean, with, 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 I mean, I think we do. I mean, where we could. I mean, no, not not changing the other parameters that I was discussing, but but, but no, the, the, you know, the anything anything we can describe in in, in a, in a Let's say a buffer policy grammar can be can be dealt with in two levels. One by by the in terms of the role. If we wish to discriminate with, with a session tag. Well, okay, so we can so so we, we we can say that, like in the general case, if you do if you do a federated user and you do assume role, then then the the, the and that and that that person that they, they create a bucket. Or if they write to an existing bucket, that usage is attributed back to the account, right? Um, uh, so if you wanted to, um, if you wanted to limit the amount of, like, if you wanted to do a quota, I on, yeah, on, not, on yeah, a not, user, I think the only way to do it would be if 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 if, if 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 you had a bucket. That that they were allowed to access, and there was a oh that only that 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 you know if there's a particular role, that and, and then a corresponding bucket that had a quota on it, and that 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 only that you know people that could assume that role could could get a right because because you, you can, and even then it would be like if multiple people can assume that role, it doesn't give a quota per per assuming you know per uh, you know what I mean? No, that's the, correct. There, 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 there's not a way to associate, like, to, to give each federated user their yeah, we can't own. Do it, but, I mean, the buckets, as far as I know, buckets can't be owned by a, a role at present. So that would rule that out. We're all using, like, bucket quota. I'm also curious, like, currently roles are global. And when we create accounts, they'll be able to own their own distinct roles. Um, but how would a, f if a federated user wants to assume a role that's part of some account, how does it? Authenticate as that account. It doesn't authenticate as the account. There, there is, there is, right? It would be um, like that, like like that account. Like so, someone in that account would create would create a role. They would create an OIDC provider, and they'd create a policy that allows, you know, that that, that looks for certain things in the the attestation, and and, and allows them to. You know, transition to that to okay. that role, right? So the, the federated user just has to specify the role as account ID slash role, and policy will check whether that's allowed or not. Exactly right. So, yeah, yeah. So when they, when they when they when they make the assume role call, they they I, I can't remember if they provide the ARN of the role that they're assuming, but um... okay. So then ownership of the role would default to the account and it all makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, but 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 the, but but to Raghu's point, the, the thing it does not provide is the ability to like if I have a, a, a you know an IDP, I don't I don't have any ability to say, you know, anybody with with you know, anybody that comes in with an attestation that says that they're part of the free buckets group, that they get a a, a, a one terabyte quota, right? There's there's no there's no way to do something like that, right? I I think we might have already discussed this, but uh, this is a question about the quota and accounts, or if, if there's going to be a hierarchy of quotas uh, or accounts, and uh, say I had an account and it was the top level, and I created an account for Matt and Kyle. And set their quotas to 50 each is my quota 100 or do i just not have a quota and 
quota is a property of a sub tenant or a sub uh, account. So you would have a quota. Matt and I would not, unless we had our own distinct accounts. So it's like you, like like with, like you could have your own account. You could create IM users because and 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 credentials that are associated with them, and you could use them for like different applications or something. Um, but but you wouldn't then be able to like set a quota on those applications. If 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 you want to give somebody if you want to set quotas on somebody then they should have their own account and and if people yeah, on and, but and people with different accounts can share you know can share resources through policy and stuff i think that that separate account case the hierarchical accounts is what ali was asking about oh yeah it's mostly yeah, about yeah. whether child usage is counted against the parents quota which i think is an open question yeah, I, I I will have to look. I'll have to look at, at at Amazon. I know at least with S3, I don't think that they there is any notion of quota. Really, they just send you a big bill, <laughs> <laughs> right? Because you know it's kind of self enforcing. <laughs> but but they do have quotas for other things, and I don't know exactly how that works. Where it's like you know you're you're allowed to provision a maximum of like three VPCs or something. I don't know, and and and. Like if you, you I, 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 it might be just that, that that each individual account has associated quotas and, and it doesn't kind of like the parent account doesn't have like a macro quota. It just is responsible for the like the the parent account can also create its own resources. Right. And so like its quotas actually apply to only its resources, not its not its children. Um, but but I'm, but I'm not sure if there's some sort of like global if you can set like organizational quotas or something like that. Yeah, well, it sounds like this quota stuff is outside of the the IAM APIs. So I feel like we have some freedom to decide how we want to how to do that. And it sounds like there are use cases where the hierarchy idea makes sense. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's a totally separate AWS API. So we don't like like it's not if we don't choose to to do the the, the set and get quota APIs in AWS that that that, that doesn't make for an uh, incomplete IAM implementation. All right. Well, we're up to the hour. A lot of good discussion. I feel like there's still some open questions. I'll try to um, maybe track those in the, the pull request for the design. But I can go through and update that with the decisions that yeah, we've made so far. Yeah, I like the OIDC. Like, like, you know, I have federated identity and I want to give, you know, e e e each of the people that are in the, you know, foo group some, some amount of storage, right? We don't, we don't really have an answer for that. And I don't like to think about that more. Good news. Yeah, good news. Good news. Good news. Good news. So. I have like one basic question not related to quotas. Uh, is it okay to ask like, this regarding SDS thing? Yeah, sure. So one thing I see is that when a user tries to create a role, you give permission, you do give the capabilities, you say you can write permission, and it's like the only option is star. So one user can alter the role of another user. So if there are like 10 roles created by 10 different users, one user has the capability to modify the role of another user. What can yeah. you do to overcome that? Correct, yeah. Currently, roles are essentially global and controlled by admin capabilities, which the admin has to grant to a specific user. And those admin capabilities do give you the ability to read and write all all roles, even if they're used by other users. But the account concept kind of, you create roles within an account, and so only the users within that account should be able to, to use and modify them. But the current code right now that is there uh, in the Reef, it doesn't have any account concept right now. All we have is roles. So this is like the work in progress of to create the accounts, right? Correct. Yeah, we're we're discussing design for a new account feature. 
<laughs> so ideally, like if I'm like a, a cloud admin, I should be, if I can control all the roles, how it gets created, then it would not, and do not give any permissions to anyone, then I probably have like more authority, I guess, so that one user cannot modify the role of another user. Then. That's right, yeah. All right, great discussion today. Thanks, everybody.